Most people are attracted to clocks because of the face, the dial, the hands, that tell something. I've often wondered what produces this visceral attraction in clock lovers, and of course the fact that it's a live thing. So in the antiques world, a clock is a unique thing. And you can see that by the clocks in my workshop. It's a weird mixture of the good, the bad, the ugly, the new, the not so new, and the very, very old. Now, the really very old tend to look much nicer and last longer and be of considerable interest to me. And I'm very glad to have the stream of clocks I work on occasionally spiced by something. That makes life worthwhile for me, repairing the occasional really antique clock. But we have to restore what we're given. We can't pick and choose. So not only do I get the clocks running, I also transfigure their external appearance. Old school is leave it looking decrepit and old and squalid. New school is try and restore it back to something like its maker intended it. I'm of the new school in that regard. I clean the ormolu mounts. I remove grease from the case. I get a kick out of that, even if it's just cleaning the glass. Unless I get the impression that the owner considers the muck to be sacred. Oh, no one, for example, would congratulate me if I put the Turin shroud through a dry cleaning and got rid of all those stains. And for some people, stains are, are important. I take the clock to bits. I put it in the ultrasonic cleaning tank, which has a solution of dilute ammonia in water. And then I rinse the parts with hot water and then dry them in a drying tank, which is like a, a hair dryer within a box. Now they're sparkly and clean again. This is a German clockworks that come out of an oak wall hanging case and the pendulum would dangle down below and be seen through a glass. Instead of minute markings here, we have 24-hour markings. The French and the Germans use the 24-hour system in all kinds of ways, far more than they did in England or America. So that's the first clue about that. Then if we turn it round, we can see it has two sets of hammers here that play chiming rods and they are struck by leather-filled brass hammer heads, rather like pencil eraser heads. The clock itself is in good, very good shape, but the hands were dropping down. So I've tightened up the, the friction drive mechanism that keeps the hands running properly. That's all I had to do. Reasonably good quality item. Middle range, and that would have been afforded by prosperous middle-class people somewhere in Germany. The only clocks I reject are mass-produced post-war cuckoo clocks because I value my sanity too highly to get mixed up with those things. Oddly enough, New York itself wasn't a clock-making centre. New Jersey was. It made them very well in the 18th century, very stylishly. Oh, John Metcalf. Well, hello there, how are you? At last, yes. Oh, it took about a week and a half. Mind-bending, really. Everybody was out. That was the only consolation. <laughs>